sermon on the topic evidence experience and expectation hallelujah on these three topics i'm going to speak about from the scriptures it's going to be pure scriptures my dear brothers and sisters mark in chapter 16 was 1 to 4 i'm going to read very quickly when the sabbath was over mary magdalene and mary the mother of james and salome bought spices that is sweet smelling spices to preserve the body of jesus christ so that they might come and anoint him very early on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen they were saying to one another who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb looking up they saw that the stone had been rolled away although it was extremely large okay so now you we have meditated on the cross and you know the darkness came upon the land of israel huh and the pharisees and the sadducees and the chief priests they were all stunned by the supernatural occurrences happening uh, on the sky and on the earth because there was an earthquake when jesus was crucified there was rocks being split and the curtain in the most holy place was torn apart yeah so there were supernatural occurrences and these people knew what is happening that they are not killing a, a normal carpenter they are dealing with a supernatural being who's god the son jesus christ hallelujah most of us take jesus very lightly in our life we think he is a very pathetic person because he was crucified no he is a supernatural being containing all the power within himself just controlling and containing just to become a sacrifice for you and for me do you understand without the blood being shed without his death there is no remission of sins for you and for me that is the only reason he was silent that day hallelujah and what i admire from the portion that i read here is when the men the trained men for 3 and a half years these 12 disciples at least the 11 one was a betrayer gone huh eh? 11 disciples who were trained by jesus himself direct training from jesus these people were expected to be moving and doing something for the lord because of the love and the passion that they had for jesus but what we see is they closed they were in hiding okay when when men are in hiding women were in the were on the move they prepared the spices they bought the spices they knew there are heavy challenges before them they knew very well that these three women mary the second mary and salome can never roll the stone in the tomb okay they never had the strength to do that okay and no no other man support ha huh? but they the, they were led by the love and the holy spirit understand even now my dear brothers and sisters women are on the move for christ more than men men are logically thinking men are very hesitant men are more of reasoning but women move with love and compassion and led by the holy spirit do you understand that type of christians are needed those people are very much in demand and they are the people who are building the kingdom of god and the bible is a very honest book as i told you before it records those women and their names okay who are in true love for jesus christ when everyone thought the chapter is closed gone we have lost we are full of shame and defeat defeated people but these people were still on the move because they love jesus christ they were they are not there to impress anyone you understand they went in the dark early morning not to impress anyone but to just serve the lord jesus christ hallelujah we need to learn from these women my dear brothers and sisters but when they when you should know there is a very divine secret embedded in these scriptures even though i have challenges in front of me which i cannot handle there are stones which i cannot roll away i do not have the strength to even move an inch but still i will go whatever i can do i will do whatever i cannot do the heaven will do for me 
angels will be sent to roll away the stone do you understand whatever in my part whatever i can do in my life uh, to build the kingdom or to build my career or to build my family to build my relationship i have to do god is not going to send an angel for doing that i have to take the first step to come out of the room i have to take the first step of preparing the spices to anoint jesus christ the fragrant oil everything i am fully prepared and i am on the move risk, risking my life before the roman soldiers in those days women were violated violated abused killed women were not even considered as human beings but those are the beautiful people who are in action for jesus christ the resurrected one hallelujah hallelujah i am so proud of these women hallelujah i am i believe that this ministry will also be built by women hallelujah hallelujah men are, men will take charge but the first move comes from pure hearts hallelujah those who are filled with love not with logic those who are, those hearts which are burning with the love of jesus christ not there to just put some plan do you understand do, not to show off no these people were risking their lives in the early morning but when they arrived to the tomb they saw that the job is done that stone is already rolled away hallelujah by an angel of god hallelujah the stone that is so big and heavy before you will be tipped off by a small little angel for heaven it is nothing whatever your problem today which is so powerful and staggering is just a soft play toy for an angel for a little cute angel you need not have any archangels in operation <laughs> a little angel is enough for your problems to be dealt with you should under but you have to move on the area that you have to move there is a part that is expected from you which only you have to do not your neighbor not your pastor not your husband not your wife only you can do that and god is waiting for that move do you understand not even your children not even your parents one that individual has to move on that area with the faith with all their difficulties with all their weaknesses believing in the lord and the heavenly help that they, they should get only then the stones are going to be rolling away in front of you my dear brothers and sisters the heaven operates not for lazy people but those who are active and moving hallelujah and the angel beautiful verse here yet they saw entering the tomb they saw a young man sitting at the right wearing a white robe and they were amazed and another uh, gospel says the angel was seated on the on the stone hallelujah was beautifully seated on the problem that you are facing hallelujah on the barrier the angels are ready to tip it off play with it and be seated beautifully on it hallelujah hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters we may not have the strength we may not have the capability or intelligence or tools to move the stone but the angels are ready to do for it that for us hallelujah and then they we should know that these are the evidences i'm talking about one thing is the stone that is rolled away that's an evidence so we are building our faith on evidences as well on facts the bible records facts the bible is not lamenting here in these chapters have you seen that if i have written the gospel in this particular portion i should have added too much of emotions to it my heart was broken when i saw this happening and all but the bible is very very factual in this area it allows you to feel the feelings it wants to give you the facts hallelujah our faith is built on facts about our lord suffering and his resurrection and he said to them mark chapter 16 verse 6 it says do not be amazed the angel was saying you are looking for jesus the nazarene who has been crucified he has risen he is not here behold here is the place where they laid him see angel is 
directing their attention to the fact that he is not here. Fact. Faith based on fact that Jesus is not there. Hallelujah. Only the white linen is there. <laughs> when Peter came and visited the tomb, hearing the news from the women, when he saw the tomb, inside the tomb, the, the clothes were folded and kept very clean, very neat. So Jesus, after resurrection, he folded <laughs> his clothes. Are you folding your blankets in the morning? <laughs> Something to learn. From Jesus, he folded his clothes. He was wrapped up on the day he was crucified. Because that is how they do it. Wrapped up those clothes. He, he wrapped it up. He folded it <laughs> and kept it. Never gave any such a... Huh? Um, <laughs> menial job to the Mary and uh, the two Marys and Salome because he appreciated them. Hallelujah. He respected them. Don't be afraid. Women, don't be afraid. There is nothing to be afraid anymore. You came seeking Jesus, the one who was crucified. He's gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has risen. See the place where his body was laid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. Come and visit the tomb of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Visit the tomb. It's empty. There is no defeat. My Jesus was not defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. Now I am moving to experience. So first is evidence. What is the evidence? That the stone is rolled away. An angel is saying, come and see. Hallelujah. Hmm? It's an empty tomb. Hallelujah. And it was witnessed by Peter as well later. Now experience. So, some Christians and some theologians say experience is not important. I will respectfully disagree with that. Okay. They are asking us to do that with a good intention, but they are missing out a very important point. That even my salvation is an experience. Not just the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not just the speaking of tongues, not just the working of miracles, not just uh, uh, drive, casting out demons is an experience. No. First of all, your salvation and my salvation itself is an experience. It's not a theory. It is an experience. Hallelujah. If it is just a theory in a book, in, a, in Bible or in any book, then you are not yet impacted. You are not yet saved. But salvation is the experience for you and for me. So experience is important. And all the people in the scripture experience Jesus Christ. To the woman, Mary Magdalene, in the garden tomb, from whom there were evil spirits driven out of her. You should understand. The Bible, I told you, is a very honest book. When it introduces a person, it gives clarity who this person is. Earlier, just one, one and a half years or two years back, this Mary Magdalene was a person who went through deliverance. From Jesus Christ. She was delivered from evil spirits. Now she is a pure devotee of Jesus Christ. The first and foremost person was crying for Jesus. Truthfully, faithfully, sincere. She turned around and saw Jesus standing there. And did not know that it was Jesus. Why? Why can't she identify Jesus? Think about it. Was her eyes full of tears? Sometimes when I am when crying, I can't see people in front of me very clearly because the tears are covering me and it was early in the morning the dark and the, usually the gardeners come and keep up the garden right so she thought it's a gardener supposing him to be the gardener she said to him sir if you have carried him away tell me where you have laid him and i will take him away sir please she's begging begging for the dead body and asking the chance to serve Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many of you are begging for a chance to serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Think about it, my dear brother. I have cried for years in the presence of God for ministry opportunities. God is my witness. God is my witness. I tell you. You also have to cry to the Lord to be his servant in his presence. You need not go and cry to a pastor. 
because a pastor will have his own limitations but jesus is there to listen my dear brothers and sisters a true heart how will a true servant of god be formed in the presence of god when he cries to god asking for give me a chance to serve you lord give me a chance to serve you in whatever capacity it is i'm ready to serve you the first ministry i started doing is to hmm, um in my hometown to prepare tea coffee for the people who are coming to my prayer cell even though i was capable enough to preach i used to bring preachers from outside and conduct this saturday meeting in in my hometown and i used to prepare variety rice every week for 16 people i still remember that i prepare the food for them i serve them after that after the meeting i will be the first person to kneel down even even before anyone comes into the uh, into into my living room for the prayer the, when they enter i wanted them to feel the presence of god when they enter i don't want to enter get into a unnecessary chat you understand how was your day uh, uh, no when they enter into my house when they take the sofa they have to pres- feel the presence of god okay we if we don't get a chance create an opportunity for yourself hallelujah the women the women are teaching these things for us she was just begging this gardener let us consider him as a gardener as of now okay until now he is not revealed to to this woman as a as jesus christ himself but even to a gardener the servant of god mary madeline was ready to plead give me a chance if you have taken that body please give me a chance so that i will anoint this fragrant oil i prepared all these spices for my savior give me a last chance sir please help me a humble heart god servants carry a humble heart they are not arrogant people they are not proud people true servants of god and jesus revealed himself first to this woman hallelujah do ministry i want to break that today how uh, how were these people these women carried the resurrection message to peter the prime apostle hallelujah you might be carrying a very very important message for your pastor for your prophet for your uh, for, for the church leader you because god speaks only to innocent pure hearts not because of your title <laughs> you understand god first revealed himself to a pure heart thirsty burning for jesus christ not for the bi- people who are closing their room and crying inside the room okay so she said she, jesus said to her mary she turned and said to him this is the experience with jesus christ again i want to remind you we started with evidence now it is experience you have to experience jesus christ when you come here when you come here ask the lord lord i want to experience you and she turned and said to him in hebrew raboni and jesus said to her stop clinging to me hallelujah so what was she trying to do she wanted to go and cling to jesus christ hallelujah pure love my dear brothers and sisters hallelujah stop clinging to me hallelujah have you cling to jesus christ to the extent that jesus says stop clinging to me have you tried it in worship in your love to the lord you should love him to the extent oh my dear child enough 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 <laughs> hallelujah that's the challenge that mary magdalene is giving to you stop clinging to me for i have not yet ascended to the father but but go to my brethren so jesus after 33 and a half years of uh, earthly ministry he was always in daily communication with the father daily obedience to the father even before returning to the father he was stopped by a woman and the pure love you understand you can stop jesus who's on the way to the father by your love mary i have not even returned to my father please give me some time your love is pulling me towards you do you understand 
you can stop the lord on his journey to the father by your pure love when you kneel down before god you can pull him down whatever might be the international problem that he is dealing with <laughs> huh? you can stop him and you can bring him to your prayer room am i right am i right is my interpretation right i have not even returned to my father mary but i will give you an assignment go to my brethren and and tell them the news hallelujah so that is the first experience mary's experience the second one luke chapter 24 13 to 24 he is visiting two disciples on the way those who are walking on the road to emmaus and behold two of them were going that very day to a village named emmaus which was about 7 miles from jerusalem and they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place while they were talking and discussing jesus himself approached and began traveling with them so what i note here is that when you see G- jesus the resurrected one you Im- you can't identify him immediately even mary magdalene had that problem and now cleophas and the other disciple who are on the way to emmau they also face the same problem so you i i will leave to you why why it, wh- what might be the reason either it should be sadness of heart or tears in their eyes huh because your worries will cover all your senses huh you are broken these people are all broken hearted you should understand that they sincerely loved jesus with all their weaknesses including peter james john and all the 11 people you should know their love for jesus was sincere their reaction was different some people go into hiding some people are ready to go to the tomb some people are on the way to emmau Uh, lamenting about what has happened and they actually started preaching to the lord but their eyes were prevented from rec- recognizing him and he said to them what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as as you are walking and they stood still looking sad looking sad one of them named cleopas answered and said to him are you the only one visiting jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in the last in these days and he said to them what things see the resurrected quest, uh, christ will question you will challenge you will ask you questions which see which are seemingly stupid and he wants because he wants words from you he wants your witness okay and he said to them what things and they said to him the things about jesus the nazarene was a mighty prophet indeed and word in the sight of god and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered them him to the sen- sentence of death and crucified him but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem israel we had high hopes for him but he disappointed us just 33 and a half years he was killed by crucified we thought he is the messiah he is going to rule over us he is going to deliver us from the roman empire he is going to deliver us from these uh, cruel pharisees and sadducees but finally it is a, it is a great disappointment for us for 400 years there was no prophet in this land and this was the only guy who rose up as a mighty prophet not just in prophecy not just in revelation not just in the word of knowledge but he was performing miracles continuously every day anyone who came to him received miracles healing deliverance blind saw deaf heard lame walked but suddenly everything has has gone out of our hands he was crucified and now they are saying now we are hearing that some women had seen him after crucifixion so they were very sad and also they were perplexed and amazed by by the news you should understand so now jesus starts rebuking them you understand this is where jesus starts speaking to them in response don't you know what the prophets had written okay so experience the emmau disciples also experienced jesus 
So first one person, one to one experienced the resurrected Christ. Now two people on the way walking to Emmaus. Now 11 people are experiencing. 11 people in a closed room. Okay, Mark chapter 16, verse 36 to 40. So you can experience Jesus individually as a couple or with a group as a church. While they were telling these things, he himself stood in, the, in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So you should understand. Now I'm 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 going to we are going to thoroughly look into this. He's saying, Come and touch me, I am not a spirit. Okay? But if he is not a spirit, how did he enter into a closed room? Think about it. How did he? Because a resurrected being, resurrected flesh and bone is different to the earthly, our flesh and bone. One day we will also receive the resurrected body. You should understand. And that resurrected body will also pass through walls, wood, metals. Hallelujah. With the resurrected body, you can ascend to heaven. Understand? So what is the difference between an earthly flesh and bone and a resurrected flesh and bone that you can ascend, that you can pass through walls? Am I right? Because resurrected Jesus appeared in a closed room without the people opening the door. He entered. Yeah? And they were startled and frightened. And Jesus, the resurrected Christ, questioned and challenged and even rebuked their unbelief. Do you understand? So, resurrected Christ is not here to give you a comforting message. He will challenge you. He will push you in your faith to the next level. Because God was still training his disciples. You should understand. And he wanted them to experience his hand, his feet, his wounds. He wanted them to touch him. Please understand that God is inviting you for a personal touch and an experience with him. Until you know Jesus Christ personally, my dear brothers and sisters, you will be deceived by the people around you and the doctrines that are wandering in this world, <laughs> even in Christendom. You understand? If you don't know Christ individually, it is very easy to deceive you. There are so many cults around you. There are so many deceiving um, so-called pastors around you who will deceive you. They want to manipulate. So Jesus is calling you for a personal relationship with him. When, when Billy Graham was asked what is his motto, what is his prime objective in his life, he said, I want to encourage people, direct them towards a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not through Billy Graham. Directly, one to one, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Without that, that is not a gospel. Without that, you are not saved. You should understand that. If you don't know this Jesus Christ that the Bible speaks personally, you have to experience him personally. My dear, not through, you might be, con you might get the revelation of Jesus Christ through a vessel. There is nothing wrong. Okay? Through a man of God, through a message, through uh, some means. But that channel is not your God. Jesus is your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. It's a clear invitation to experience Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, as I told you before, now Jesus is not just trying to, the scripture is not trying to just give you evidences, facts, and make you more intelligent than before. Okay? More knowledgeable than before. Huh? To pass some objective type questions. To some pass some Bible quiz. No. God is not here to conduct a Bible quiz. And make, make sure that everyone are very intelligent. And well informed by the about the scriptures. That is not our ministry. That is not the resurrected Christ's ministry. Okay? 
you might pass with flying colors from a bible quiz but if your soul is not saved not if you have not experienced jesus christ you are still at fault am i right you might fail in all the objective questions in a bible quiz but you still might be saved understand mary magdalene did not have an answer on how to solve the problem of run, roll, rolling away the stone but she still was a most favorite first preacher of the gospel of the resurrection message okay expectation so jesus christ comes with an expectation the resurrected christ is not just giving you a a uh, fun time or just a good time an experience to make you joyful but he's there with some questions and with some challenges in mark chapter 16 verse 7 when he came to mary magdalene and when she was about to hug him ha huh? when he was about to hug him he said go to the disciples and peter and said and say tell them that jesus is going ahead of you to galilee there you will see him just as he told you so jesus had given the plan to the disciples already when he was in in the ministry ha huh? he had told peter that after his crucifixion he is going to visit them in galilee from this verse you can see that okay now jesus is giving a assignment to mary magdalene to go and remind the disciples and peter about that message about that information that he is going to meet with them in galilee and he is already ahead of you hallelujah who should be ahead here the disciples but jesus is saying i am going to be ahead of you jesus even after all the sufferings he is ahead of us and we are left behind in ministry and in, in our calling because we have hundreds of excuses hundreds of lame excuses we have as i am suffering from <laughs> i am unable to fulfill my calling i am unable to uh, to preach the gospel i am unable to come to the church because of storm there is a, i saw a dark cloud <laughs> so uh, i have other weekend plans as i am suffering from as my tire is punctured as my car is not having enough petrol do you understand Jesus say i am going ahead of you to galilee i trained you for 3 and 1/2 years my my son peter my dear friend peter james john but i am after all the suffering for you after all the pain that i've gone for you i am still going ahead of you my dear brother do you understand the heart of jesus you should understand that jesus died on the cross with a broken heart do you agree peter was not next to him when he when he gave his last breath he was the prime huh, apostle but he was not there next to him and he was going through pain and also so the first expectation is move on come and meet me in galilee galilee is the place where jesus started his ministry galilee is the place where jesus trained the 12 disciples galilee is the place where mighty miracles signs and wonders were done in the sea shores of galilee galilee is the place where the sermon on the mount happened the feeding of 3000 and 5000 people happened in galilee hallelujah come let's do the ministry again that is the invitation that jesus said giving to the 11 disciples and, and peter come to galilee i'm waiting let's do the ministry again hallelujah hallelujah now the lord is calling you and me into ministry not to go alone <laughs> he is ready to join with you in the form of the holy spirit hallelujah in the form of the holy spirit is there with us the second expectation is that first we have finished mary magdalene now to the two disciples cleopas and the other disciple on the way to emma he was asking 
this is a quite a tough word from Jesus, the resurrected one. Just don't think Jesus is always full of love and compassion, always cuddling you, comforting you, uh, cradle. Uh, no. Just look at his word. Luke chapter 24, 25 to 27. And he's, Jesus said to them, Oh, foolish men! <laughs> Until this time, he was just inquiring, why are you sad? My beloved, don't be sad like this. Uh, and they were preaching to him. Okay, don't, you, you might be the only person who doesn't know what happened in Jerusalem. Oh, foolish men and slow of heart. What does it mean? You sluggish people, spiritually sluggish people, sleeping, lazy people who do not have their senses activated. Slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Jesus is expecting the prophets' words to be taken as serious as possible. Prophetic word is nothing but the Old Testament and the New Testament. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Have you not read Isaiah chapter 53? That is what he is asking. Have you not read to the prophets and have you, are you not believing it? Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. Seven miles of walking was filled with preaching of Jesus Christ to these two disciples. The resurrected Christ is here to remind us of the prophet and the words, the Bible and the scriptures. What do we do here every week? Preaching the word of God in its truth and in its power. That is the only thing that we have to do. Resurrected Christ is demanding us to do that. Even if you have to hear the same revelation thousands of times, God is ready, happy to reveal himself thousands of times. Because it is so critical for your eternity. So, resurrected Christ sometimes might call you foolish. You have to be ready for that. A good trainer will challenge you to the extreme. You know, there is a personality coach in America. His name is Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins. If you search in Google. Or... So if you go to his personality coaching, he will make you a leader. Bill Clinton was trained by him. You know Bill, Bill Clinton, former president of America. Most of the presidents, most of the CEOs in America who are who are running multi-million dollar uh, companies, they are all trained by this man and, and equals. Okay, So he, when, you, when you go for a five-day training or a three-day training, first he will motivate you, inspire you that you can achieve things that you think you cannot do. And in the third day, fourth day, he will ask you to walk on coal fire because you are uplifted to, an ex, to a powerful, into a... You are inspired to a certain extent that whatever was not possible previously will be possible that day. In your mind, you are taken up to that level. Do you understand? Just by human power and motivation. Jesus is not asking you to walk on coal fire. He is just asking you to fulfill the gospel, the preaching of the gospel. Do you understand? The remaining, when you touch the people, will be healed. You, If you are on fire for Jesus... The you are the fire, you will impact others. And they, Anthony Robbins will scold you, will shout at you, even if you are a CEO, even if you are a Bill Clinton, he will shout at you. Call you stupid and foolish. Because his aim is to make you great. He doesn't want to, you to remain a fool. He is just pushing you. From your sluggish heart to the extent that you can go and achieve things for God. Because Jesus promised, those who believe in me will do greater things than what I am doing. Do you understand? Greater things than the master. Greater things than... That is what our calling is. Whatever Jesus did, without a two-wheeler, without a car, without a ship, uh, without an aer aeroplane flight, you can do now. He just traveled in Israel, Judea, Galilee, Jerusalem. He did not even do any international ministry. But now, for you and for me, if you are empowered, 
you can book a ticket to anywhere in this world am i right you can reach places where jesus could not reach when he was doing his earthly ministry where paul could not reach paul was an international minister but he was contained in that area middle east do you understand europe the maximum he could touch was europe but for you and for me there is no limitation you can go beyond boundaries and you can function in the power of the holy spirit and with the internet there is no limitation no boundaries now experience the resurrected christ and the last experience was the 12 11 disciples in the closed room so first one was just to go and tell the pre tell the disciples that jesus is going ahead to galilee second one he called them fools because they forgot the prophetic words the prophet's words now he comes and says peace be with you in the closed room as the father has sent me i also send you and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit the resurrected christ is appearing to you and to me for again a supernatural experience that is the receiving of the holy spirit if you forgive them forgive the sins of any their sins have been forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they have been retained you should understand what a great commission we have received you can forgive their sins when you are baptizing a person what is happening you are burying them their past is buried when you pull them out of the water they start as a new creature in christ am i right yeah new you can bury other sins in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit i bury you into the water and pull you out of water as a new creature in christ hallelujah what a great commission my dear brothers and sisters uh, no politician can do that you are clearing up their data am i right their past historical data is cleared all corrupted data is cleared all sins are cleared my dear brothers and sisters but you need the holy spirit for that not just because you get a title you will be able to do that no you need the holy spirit to do that ministry receive the holy spirit so there was still something pending and lacking in the 11 disciples do you understand there was still room for development <laughs> your managers will say that right <laughs> performance review has room for development he came into the closed room and said there is room for development and he said that is the, the area that you lack is the holy spirit until you receive the holy spirit you will be locking yourself into into a room and staying comfortable lamenting you know how much jesus loved me john you will never understand peter you will never understand he loved me more than you he, you know that day he gave me a special food you never received it you know he showed me a special he told me a very important spiritual secret that no other 11 people know you understand you can say that you are a very special uh, loving child of jesus christ but you are still in a closed room you have to be delivered by the power of the holy spirit he can talk all stories but all it's of no use until you fulfill the commission of jesus christ am i right am i talking the truth or not even though it's very difficult to speak all these things i'm speaking it because we are getting a false satisfaction in christendom falsehood is being preached just because you come and attend a church service if you get satisfied and if you think you are in god's perfect plan and you are on the move don't deceive yourself the resurrected christ demands more than that he is a very demanding person go and ask any man of god who is used by by god powerfully jesus is a very demanding master with love hallelujah the power of the holy spirit hallelujah he demands he will not allow lazy laziness to creep into your life hallelujah hallelujah he will tire you up with with all the responsibilities that is going to give you hallelujah if you are ready hallelujah are you ready are you willing 
he will not compel you he will not compel you he is ready to give you a second chance he is ready to give you a third chance when he visited here the, the portion that we meditated in the closed room our beloved favorite disciple saint thomas was not there <laughs> my beloved my my favorite disciple is thomas <laughs> because he came to india <laughs> he came to kerala he came to tamil nadu he went to china also okay so you should understand my favorite disciple missed out to this experience and he was not ready to accept peter's experience and john's experience and the other other people's experience he said i want to see him personally i want to touch his wounds i want to put my finger into the into, into the wounds into the wounds and jesus reappeared for my favorite disciple demand are you ready to demand spiritual experiences and love through love lord how can you visit peter james john but not me that was the prayer of thomas and god answered it then he appeared to thomas and said when he was available the resurrected one he do you understand the heart of the resurrected christ he wants to ensure that there is no doubt left in you no doubt about his resurrection you are so valuable india is so valuable indians are so valuable he cannot miss out on the indians he came back for thomas god has a very very special purpose for you and for me my dear brothers and sisters